How's it going everybody? Thank you for checking my channel and welcome to today's video. Today's video is actually inspired by a comment by Ghost Dancing who asked me about a crafting guide video for new players. So today I'm gonna to cover what I feel are a good mix of some of the more important and the most commonly used recipes in the game. And they're gonna be ones that range from being able to be used in normal difficulty all the way into end game content. Before we actually go ahead and jump into the video, I wanna go ahead and say thank you for the suggestion as these are the type of videos that I really do enjoy making. As Aaron stated, being able to help those better understand the game is one of the reasons that I continue to enjoy making content like this. As when I first started playing this game back when it originally launched, there weren't a lot of guys to be able to learn from to be able to pick up on things like this. And as Thomas mentioned, I know that there are already so many great channels already out there giving useful insight. Many that I have watched and learned from myself as well. But with you guys coming to my channel to be able to check out my content, I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you guys are gonna be entertained at the very least, and maybe even pick up something along the way, whether you are a new player or a veteran to this game. But with all that said, let's get into the video. Upgrading gems. Three of the same quality gems, being chipped, flawed, normal, and flawless, transmuted in the cube, upgrades the gem type until you get to a perfect gem. Upgrading runes. Upgrading runes could be the difference in getting the rune words you desire faster than waiting for the exact rune to drop. Farming the Countess, Lower Kurost, or Travancol are some of the most common places to look for runes, and you can upgrade all runes starting with Elrune up to Zod. Runes up to Thul only require three of the same rune to cube up. Afterwards, starting at Thul and ending at Lem, Runes still require three of the same type, but also need a specific gem, starting with chipped and ending with flawed to cube up. From pull rune onward, cubing up requires two of the same rune with a specific flawed gem ending with flawless. For more specific information on the exact recipes, check out my previously made video going over the recipes in full. Rerolling magic items. For normal and nightmare difficulty, where the additional plus to skills early on can give your character a much more noticeable boost in power, there's a recipe that would come in handy to reroll magic items as well as add sockets. Three chip gems of any kind with a magic item would reroll the mods or the stats on the item, as well as add one or two sockets to the item. This can be especially useful for getting the desired mods such as plus to a specific skill, and it works on class specific weapons as well, such as orbs, claws, and scepters, to name a few. This can be done over and over again with the item level always being at 25 until you either get your desired mods or stats, or you run out of chip gems and need to find more. Savage Polearm. For those with a decent amount of gold early on, as many players opt for getting a mercenary to assist them through their playthroughs. More often than not, it's the Act 2 mercenary. Many times the ideal weapon to give them isn't found very easily, but there's a recipe to add enhanced damage to a polearm, and it's relatively cheap as well if you were to buy the items from a vendor. It requires any diamond quality, any staff, any chris, and any belt. Transmute them in the cube, and you now have a polearm with up to 80% enhanced damage. And for early gameplay, it helps to have your mercenary not just be a shield, but to add to the overall damage done when playing through the game, especially on lower player settings offline or playing solo online. Rings into amulets, and amulets into rings. For those who have an overabundance of rings and amulets and want to make room for more items, cubing three magic rings makes for a new randomized magic amulet, as well as three magic amulets transmute into a new randomized magic ring. Those with higher player character levels will be able to potentially get better mods or stats on the items. Sticking with jewelry for a moment, if your character lacks resistances, there's a few recipes to be able to craft specific resistances that you may need. For help with poison resistance, place a magic ring, a perfect emerald, and an antidote potion into the cube, and it will transmute into a jade ring. For help with cold resistance, place a magic ring, a perfect sapphire, and a thawing potion into the cube, and it will transmute into a cobalt ring. For help with lightning resistance, place a magic ring, a perfect topaz, and a rejuvenation potion into the cube, and it will transmute into a coral ring. And lastly, for help with fire resistance, place a magic ring, a perfect ruby, and an exploding potion into the cube, and it will transmute into a garnet ring. All of these rings will roll with a varying 21 to 30% to their resistance. To get the benefit for all resistances on an amulet, place a perfect gem of each type, not including a skull, with a magic amulet into the cube, and it will transmute into a prismatic amulet with a varying 16 to 25% to all resistances. All of these are great for those needing placeholders while farming for better gear, especially since starting in Nightmare, you will get a resistance penalty, and the most common deaths in the game come from elemental attacks, so any help with the resistances will only benefit your build. Cubing Rejuvenation Potions For those with an overabundance of rejuvenation potions, you can transmute three regular reju potions into a full rejuvenation potion, as well as three health potions, three mana potions, and one normal gem transmutes into a full rejuve. But for those with only chip gems but still want rejuvenation potions, place three health potions, three mana potions, and a chipped gem into the cube 
to transmute into a regular rejuvenation potion. This recipe comes in a lot of handy for those who will either hoard a lot of their gems in normal playthroughs, or for those doing lower Kuros runs as gems are one of the more common things to pop out of the super chests. Now that we cover some of the more useful recipes when it comes to a normal playthrough, from normal all the way through hell, even doing a little bit of farming afterwards, let's go into more of the commonly used ones when it comes to endgame use. Socketing items. One of the most commonly used recipes is to add sockets to items to use for rune words. With all of these items, this will work for items not superior. This works with normal, plain, white named items. With weapons, place into the cube a Ral rune, Am rune, and a perfect amethyst with your weapon, and transmute it for sockets that will randomly range from one open socket to the item's max sockets with its current item level. What that means is, for example, a crystal sword found in normal difficulty and a crystal sword found in hell difficulty will not roll for the same max open sockets. And it all depends on the item level of the item. This concept works for all different types of items to socket within your cube. With body armor, place a Tal rune, Thol rune, and a perfect topaz with the body armor into the cube, and transmute it for sockets that randomly range from one open socket to the max open sockets for the current item level of the armor. With helms or headwear, place into the cube a Ral rune, Thol rune, and a perfect sapphire with the helm or headwear, and it'll transmute randomly for between one to three open sockets, depending on its current item level. Lastly, for shields, place a Tal rune, Am rune, and a perfect ruby with the shield into the cube to transmute randomly for between one open socket to its max open sockets, depending on the item's current item level removing socketed items. If you're wanting to clear out the items or runes within a socketed item, such as wanting to reroll spirit shields for the desired 35 SCR, place a socketed item into the cube with a hell rune and a scroll of town portal, and once transmuted, it will clear out the item for you to be able to now resocket. Rerolling small charms and grand charms. Rerolling small charms and grand charms is one of the more popular uses of the cube in endgame to help max a build's potential. Using any combination of three perfect gems with a grand charm or small charm will reroll the charm to hopefully get better preferable mods or stats especially plus to life skillers for grand charms, as well as 20 to life or 7% magic find for small charms. To name a few. For online PvP use, you can also reroll blue monarchs in this way as well for the elusive J mod, which stands for Jeweler's Monarch of Deflecting. Lastly, using six perfect skulls with a rare diadem will reroll it, with many looking for the two to all skills and 20 FCR diadems. If you want more in-depth information on any of those, as going deeper into the specifics would warrant their own videos. Check out these previously made videos where I dive deeper into the information with rerolling grand charms, small charms, diadems, and blue monarchs for a jmod, including item levels, where to find the items preferred for rerolling, additional stats that potentially could roll, and much more. Upgrading items. Upgrading items allow for more damage, defense, and even when it comes to belts, can allow for you to carry more potions in your belt. Before upgrading items, do understand that as the base of the item upgrades, the requirements to use them will increase as well so taking into account having the correct attributes to be able to use it is very important. With normal unique armor, including gloves, boots, body armor, shields, and helmets and headwear, place the item into the cube with a shale rune, tal rune, and a perfect diamond, and transmute it to upgrade it to an exceptional version of the item. Then to be able to upgrade exceptional armors, place the item with a lem rune, co rune, and a perfect diamond, and it'll transmute into an elite version of the item. With a normal unique weapon, place the item with a soul rune, ral rune, and a perfect emerald, and it'll transmute into an exceptional version of the item. Then to upgrade the exceptional weapon, place it into the cube with a Lum rune, pull rune, and a perfect emerald, and it'll transmute to an elite version of the item. Crafting items. Crafting items can grant players the ability to truly minimax very specific aspects of their build, depending on the demand that they have within their build. The items most commonly crafted are caster amulets, blood gloves, hit power gloves, and caster belts. With caster amulets, place a magic amulet into the cube with a Ral rune, perfect amethyst, and any jewel, and transmute it for an amulet that rolls with a varying 5-10% to faster cast rate, regenerate mana, and up to 20 mana, but preferably with the right character level and item level, you could potentially get plus 2 to a character or specific skill tree, as well as 20% faster cast rate, along with other preferable mods or stats. For blood gloves, place into the cube a pair of magic heavy gloves, shark skin gloves, or vampire bone gloves, along with nephrun, any jewel, and a perfect ruby, and it'll transmute into blood gloves that come with life leech, varying 10 to 20 to life, and varying 5 to 10% crushing blow. But with the right character level and item level, you could potentially get plus 2 to a character or specific skill tree, as well as 20% increased attack speed, and other preferred monster stats. For hit power gloves, place a magic pair of chain gloves, heavy bracers, or van braces, along with an ort rune, a perfect sapphire, and any jewel, and it'll transmute into hit power gloves with knockback, chance to cast frost nova, and attacker takes damage varying from 3 to 7 but preferably can get plus to skills, 20% increased attack speed, along with additional preferred mods or stats. Lastly, are caster belts. Great for those that need FCR, 
but don't yet have an Arachnid's Mesh, but will settle for a placeholder caster belt as it's the only other way in the game to have a belt with FCR on it. Place into the cube a Magic Blue, Light Belt, Sharkskin Belt, or Vampire Fang Belt, along with an Ith Rune, Perfect Amethyst, and any jewel, and it'll transmute into a caster belt with a varying 5-10% faster cast rate. Regenerate mana varying from 4% to 10% and varying 10-20 to 20 to mana, but can get the additional preferred mods or stats. Repairing and recharging weapons and armor. This is one of my favorite recipes to use in the game, as this recipe not only is arguably the cheapest of all the others, and comes in more handy than one usually may think, but it's one of the best ways to save gold and is often used with endgame gear. When your non-ethereal items run low on durability, or even break, you can repair them in your cube with the runes that you'd find farming the Countess in normal difficulty. With the rune that's used to be able to repair weapons, just need to be cubed up from the same rune that's used to be able to repair armors. For armors, place a Ral rune with your armor into the cube, and transmuting it will fully repair it. If it has charges that also need to be replenished, place any flawed gem in with your armor and Ral rune, and after transmuting, the charges will be fully replenished along with the durability being repaired. For weapons, place an Ort rune with the weapon into the cube, and transmuting it will fully repair it. If the weapon also has charges that need to be replenished, place any chip gem into the cube with your weapon and an Ort rune, and after transmuting, the charges will be fully replenished along with the durability being repaired. Lastly, the two recipes that are arguably some of the more fun ones to be able to use when it comes to endgame is to be able to go into the cow level by putting a Tome of Town portal in with Wart's Leg to be able to open up the Mumu farm. As well as being able to place one of each key, being the Key of Terror, Key of Hate, and Key of Destruction in the cube to be able to open up one of the portals into the mini Ubers. And once collecting all three of the organs, being Diablo's Horn, Bale's Eye, and Mephisto's Brain. Transmuting those into the cube will open up Uber Tristram, where you'll be able to fight all three of the prime evils in hopes that you'll be able to get the sought after Hellfire Torch. All the recipes up to this point are the ones that I felt are going to be the most important or the most commonly used when it comes to a playthrough of normal difficulty all the way up to end game content, including Ubers. However, there are a lot of recipes that I didn't cover, and for any of you guys that would be interested in that, make sure to go check the links down in the description below to be able to check out even more recipes that you can use with the Herodric Cube. Granted, the only two that I didn't cover are going to be the ones for the Herodric Staff and Kaleem's Will, because they're self-explanatory when going through a normal playthrough of the game. They're pretty much told to you when it comes to being able to advance from act to act to act, so I felt that they were not worth covering in this video. However, again, I hope you guys were able to see all the different uses that I thought were going to be important or most commonly used to be able to help you guys with your playthroughs and to be able to make this game even more fun. If you like this kind of content and want to see more, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified whenever a new video comes out. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. There you are. There you are. And if you like this video, please let me know by leaving a like. It really is appreciated to be able to help my channel to grow. Other than that, hope you're all staying safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.